Who copied who? Crocodiles or alligators? Does the sky change color at night or do my eyes change? Answers to these questions and more on this episode of This Paranormal Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt today's episode for an emergency broadcast. Do not adjust your set. The information you are about to receive may well save your life. We had a normal episode of This Paranormal Life ready to release this week, but shortly before posting, we received information that indicates Earth may be under threat of imminent invasion by one or more alien races. At this time, we are recommending people stay in their homes and to ration their supplies of both water and beans. Not for eating or survival, but so you can appease our new alien gods with a humble offering of beans. So barricade your homes, switch off all the lights, but most importantly, put your feet up, relax, and enjoy this This Paranormal Life special report into whatever the f*** is going on out there. Oh my god. This is, of course, also the weekly comedy podcast where every Tuesday, me and Rory Powers get to the bottom of a different paranormal case. How are you doing today, Rory? I'm doing great, kid. I didn't know that we were breaking out the emergency broadcast system uh, for today's podcast. A system which is not used lightly on this podcast. Let me tell you, uh, I believe the last time we used it was back in 2018 when a slinky fell off my shelf in the middle of the night and I was so terrified. I slept that entire evening with the lights on and I requested we do an emergency broadcast to get to the bottom of it the next morning. But it seems like this is even more terrifying and important than that incident. And yes, I set it off in 2019 when I ran out of Cocoa Pops and you reprimanded me for that. Uh, But this is the first time we were using it properly. Rory, you didn't know we were doing it. No one knew we were doing it. Almost not even me. Wow. That's because every week on This Paranormal Life, we get into all the most hard-hitting paranormal cases from around the world. So it says a lot when we have to do a breaking news special bulletin about something as life-threatening as whatever is going on uh, today. But whereas normally we're going back in time, sometimes many years, sometimes hundreds of years. Sometimes into the future. (laughs) To figure out uh, whether a a ghost apparition was really paranormal or not, or whether uh, a cryptid sighting really happened. Today, we are staying firmly in the present day because, as I say, some evidence has come across our desk of apparently imminent paranormal threat. I am so into this. We're not diving into the past today. We're not diving into the future. We're living in the now. You want evidence, folks? Open the f***ing window and look outside. And don't turn on the TV. Don't, don't, Don't go see what the news has to say. Because that's propaganda. Open your window and listen to the birds. Listen to the animals. Listen to... I think this is a Pocahontas song. Listen to the colors of the wind or something. Open your third eye and look at what the hell's going on. If you haven't been living under a rock, you've probably been seeing mysterious headlines surfacing throughout 2023 and earlier. The Pentagon releases new UFO files. Chinese spy balloons shot down over Alaska. Increases in UAP activity spotted by the US Air Force. What's a UAP? Unidentified. Uh, I do know that. Alien? Unidentified I'm alien penis? Thinking, no, it's not. And I don't make light of it because it's actually incredibly serious. A phenomenon, unidentified aerial phenomenon, gotta be that, surely. Uh, unexplained anomalous phenomenon. Oh, wow, I was way off. Rory, they're not aerial anymore. They're here. They've landed. But they're still in the skies, right? No, unexplained anomalous, anomalous phenomena. <laughs> One more time. Unexplained anomalous phenomena. (laughs) Uh, These little mermaids aren't aerial anymore, if you catch my drift. They're Sebastian. They're under the sea. UFO. Don't get me started on the sea, (laughs) brother. We might be able to fit that into today's episode. Uh, UFO doesn't cover it. They're not flying. They landed. Rory, are you ready to hear about our first piece of recent UFO evidence? I'm very excited, Kit, to dive in today. As promised, our first piece of evidence is unbelievably recent. In 2022, in Iraq, a US military-operated UAV drone was hovering high above a market, one of presumably many and many 
such objects in the region left over from the Iraq war. Being a drone, of course, its pilot was, in all probability, hundreds or thousands of miles away in a military base. Sure. The young operator was monitoring a street near this market, looking for activity, and if he had blinked, he may well have missed it. But a strange sight had caught his eye. It looked like a metal orb barreling through the sky to the north. As it left the frame, he thought he must have been imagining things. But he whipped the UAV around and started chasing this silver object, managing to focus on it for a few seconds. But try as he might to keep up, the flying sphere left him in the dust. He'd just seen something he had no explanation for, and he wasn't sure he even wanted to know. I start our story here because if this was the 80s or the 90s or earlier, we wouldn't even know about this. There would be a bullet in the back of that operator's head and his family would be told he choked on a peanut on his lunch break. Sure. But for reasons that we're probably going to get into uh, soon or later, not only do we know about it, but we have that video. This is one of the key pieces of evidence we're looking at today, and each one will be linked in the description of this podcast episode so you can watch along at home. I have almost immediately now just realized how not fun this podcast is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think as soon as you said the words US military and Iraq, I completely shifted gears and realized what this is going to be today. <laughs> Rory, I was like, what kind, of, up. I was like, what kind of wacky adventures are we going to talk about today? And you're like, I have the classified files here that were filmed in the 1914 invasion of it's like, oh my Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, if you're here for banter, leave now. Uh, we are here. Well, we can still keep it fun, man. We can keep it light. We can. not uh, I would love to be able to keep it fun, <laughs> but we have so much hard hitting evidence. This orb that they're talking about, was it like a buzz, a buzz, a buzz, making a weird noise or something? It was radioactive and it made several people very sick. <laughs> it vaporized a child. It vaporized a child on CCTV. <laughs> We're just pretty f***ed up. It kind of, it kind of seemed to leave its flight path. It kind of picked out this kid. I think we, he was pretty annoying looking. So we think that might have been part of it. This is the, this is the general giving a report to his seniors. I mean, the little kid was wearing like jelly sandals or something. It was like it was, it was a little dork. Uh, we think that might have been why. The f are jelly sandals. <laughs> You never seen jelly sandals? Like Crocs? We don't have time for I'm this. Sorry, I'm sorry. But jelly sandals are. I actually. Now you bring it up. I actually saw a grown man wearing jelly sandals. Je sandals. I guess they're back in because I saw a grown man wearing jelly sandals the other day, and it kind of took me by surprise. All right. We're, Why we're, does that sound we're, like we're something gonna, aliens would wear on another planet? We're, <laughs> we're gonna get. Can to I the, interest you in a pair of jelly sandals? You do know what they are because I'm about to show you. Exhibit A. Oh, that's not what I was thinking of all. Jeez, Louise. That's, uh, they do look alien, to be fair. Do you not remember these, really? No. This, this was a big feature of uh, our childhood, which is the 90s and 2000s. I mean, I know it seems strange, but remember how everything in the early 2000s was see-through? Oh, yeah. Game Great. Boys. So sick. Headphones. Uh, also, sandals. Wow. There you go. But Roy, I'm keeping my eye on you because I feel like you're trying to slow down the galloping runaway train uh, pace of the evidence on this podcast by throwing in little asides. Just trying to, this is kind of how the podcast works. We just chat about some random stuff. Not we today, go on it isn't. tangents. I guess a regular episode is, but this is an emergency broadcast. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah, we'll try and keep things. I'm pretty on track then. You say you have a video of an orb? <laughs> Rory, it's time to look at our first key piece of UFO evidence from 2022. Okay. Okay, so there's no sound to this video, it seems like, and it's almost, yeah, it's footage from a drone traveling, kind of bird's eye view downward. Is that it? So that, that's it. <laughs> that's, it, this is how fast this thing was traveling, was, I think this thing is 17 seconds long or something like that, yeah. uh, before it escaped him. So uh, I, we're basically looking at the street near this market, like I described, um, and then if you blinker, you'll miss it. At the very beginning of the video, it passes through the frame. He obviously goes, what the f was that? And then takes off in pursuit of it. This thing is going uh, hundreds of miles an hour. It's going so fast. It, it looks like a glitch. It's so weird. It is, it is <laughs> literally a bowling ball, a silver bowling ball traveling at hundreds of miles an hour through Iraq. It's so comically circular. <laughs> like, like, like we're not. This is not like a Death Star with loads of little features on it, loads yeah. of little devices. It is a perfectly, 
perfectly shiny, perfectly round orb. That is crazy. I'm retiring after, <laughs> after I see that. Because if I'm in the military, I know we ain't ready for that. I know we're not. You know what we are to that thing? Ten pins. <laughs> it's coming to knock us down. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're speechless uh, after our first piece of evidence about eight minutes into the podcast. Um, what the f*** are we looking at? I don't know, man. I don't know how this is supposed to go today. <laughs> What am I supposed to say to this? <laughs> After 300 episodes, normally uh, our evidence is so laughable. Uh, for once, we're just shown something that is so irrefutable and it's come from such a, a valid and serious source. We just have nothing to say. Yeah, there really is really not much to say after seeing this, this video file. Uh, it is what it is. A, a perfect orb flying across the Middle East. I suppose what we can say is the elephant in the room is this from Earth or is this from somewhere else? Because the f***ed up thing is there's crazy governmental military technology out there. The problem is that's how we have this video is the most high tech shit we have took that video. <laughs> right, yeah. And they were like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so <laughs> the greatest military the world has ever known, the US military, they are flying their high-tech drones around the desert and they are seeing things that they have no idea how it moves, no idea how it operates, what it's doing. Yeah. There is no understandable means of propulsion inside this thing. Can you imagine the US military at one point were like, we have now created a version of night vision that is so intense it can actually peer beyond the realms of human sight. This is the pinnacle of technology in the universe. And they turn it on, point it to the sky, and there's a robot dragon hovering above them, and they're like, what is that thing? We thought we were on the cutting edge. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get to the heart of this story too early, but I mean, this is the crux of it. Have these things always been here? Or is it not a coincidence that within the decade that these kind of military drones are looking at random streets in Iraq from satellite f***ing cameras, that's when we first start seeing these things. Yeah. Because no one was looking for it before. We wouldn't have been able to keep track of it. It's kind of embarrassing if the highest form of your technology is only capable of just detecting the lowest form of the next civilization right. society. That's like making a telescope so powerful we can see a different telescope far away that's been built for a thousand years. It's exactly. like, ah, shit, you guys, were, you guys were looking at us the whole time. We literally just figured out how to look back at you. This, is, this sucks. <laughs> I mean, that is, uh, sometimes that turns up in sci-fi movies, doesn't it? This idea of... Um, Maybe we are alone here in our in our solar system and our galaxy uh, because not that they haven't gone looking for us, um, but because we have, as far as they're concerned, exhibited no forms of intelligence or life. Yeah. You know, they've looked at Earth on the telescope and they've gone, well, it does look pretty habitable. But if there is life, uh, they haven't even constructed the most rudimentary of uh, star energy harvesting devices. And, right. uh, and no uh, lunar uh, military bases. So, um, and really, you can do those within a, a quick hundred billion years of your civilization's existence. So clearly, there's nothing there. Um, there is this worry that if we send off some kind of, uh, you know, I think they sent off a, a CD with Will I Am music on it into space. Unfortunately, that's not a joke. There is a worry that by sending those things into the galaxy that we are just basically antelope screaming to let the lions know where we are in the Serengeti. Right, right. That, that, that they'll be like, oh shit, fresh meat and uh, land the next day. Yeah, we should have at least sent them some cooler shit, you know, because I'm sure we sent them maybe a recording of Mozart, uh, a JPEG of the Picasso Really, we should have been sending up some of those crazy flavors of Mountain Dew, a Domino's pizza with stuffed crust, just kind of some of the right. really cool stuff. Kind that of we've... the actual hard-hitting inventions of humanity. Yeah, um, Nintendo Switch, Jewel Pods, yeah, <laughs> some vapes. Yeah. Dude, they would go crazy for vapes. <laughs> I think aliens would love vapes. I genuinely do. It kind of feels feels like it would fit with their whole aesthetic, you know. I like this line of thinking, though, you know, we sent those satellites into space and we sent them with, quote unquote, all of humanity's greatest achievements. When if we were being real with the aliens, we would send porn, crack cocaine 
and probably high-powered motor vehicles. Those are the shit that people like, actually. Yeah, yeah. we don't want to see the sheet music from a original piece of music written by Bach. No. We want Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift and a Long Island Iced Tea. The people have spoken. The people have spoken. Avatar is the highest grossing movie of all time. <laughs> Send Avatar 2 and uh, Flame and Cheetos. Uh, these are the things that people actually spend their hard-earned money on. Yeah, some of those motherfuckers in space probably look like the Avatar guys, so they're going to love it. So we've had one hard-hitting video already in this podcast, uh, which begs the question, why the f*** do we have it? Well, one of the reasons why the US government is going mask off for the first time with UFO sightings is because we now live in an information age. With the internet, it feels like only a matter of time until footage leaks. But one of the reasons they claim to be releasing this information is because these things are happening more often and more convincingly than ever before. Mm. As of April 2023, the Pentagon is in the midst of more than 650 active cases. Damn! They have had to create a whole new division to deal with them, called the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office. What is that? What is that acronym? A-A-R-O. Aro, I guess. Oh, oh that, that, no, that's cool. I'm into it again. And as we described, they've even changed the name of UFOs. Uh, not UFOs anymore, but UAPs, which I think I'll start saying for the rest of this episode. A little rebrand. So not to confuse everyone, but it insinuates that we have gone past somehow just flying saucers and we are into some kind of interconnected, unexplained occurrences around the world. I mean, Rory, we've seen it in other uh, UFO cases here in this podcast. These motherfuckers are landing. They're interacting with yeah. the world around us. And this new organization, A-A-R-O, yeah, there were rumors that they got in contact with this paranormal life. Yeah, there were rumors that they recruited one of the hosts of this paranormal rumors. life to join them. Rumors and legends, yes. I did just get back from a visit to the States for a couple of weeks, but I was seeing family. See family yeah. It was to see family. It really was. So, Kit, you're saying that you have more leaked UFO videos that you're going to show us right now on the podcast? A ton more. A ton more footage here that cool. could honestly put me away in prison if anyone knew about it. Nice. I'm just going to put on my sunglasses real quick. Just, oh, sure thing. Uh, just. Um, <laughs> so if you could show me some of those videos, oh, that would um, be cool. I'd really love to see them. There's, there's a light on your sunglasses? Mm -hmm. I don't have a light actually on mine. Is that a camera? No. Is that a camera no, in those no, sunglasses? No, no. It's, it's these new ones. They... They uh, charge my phone at the same I just, time. I was sure we had the same glasses, but mine don't have shit on. Yours has a glowing white light. You actually pressed a button on the side of them, and it started glowing. I don't know what you tell you, dude. These are... Oh, they're playing music now. <laughs> Sorry, they what? just... They do that sometimes. Uh, look. So, wait... Who were you seeing in America? I was seeing family. Seeing can, family. We just conti can we just continue with I some of the... I your family uh, moved to, to Northern Ireland. Uh, some Half of them did. Half of them are in the f***ing states. Uh, yeah. If you could show me some of that, that evidence, stand by. Who are you talking to? Hmm? Sorry? How were they playing music? Your sunglasses were, pay were playing music? They were... Was um, that even music? Or was that I just was, someone talking? I was humming. No, I was humming. I was humming... If we could show, if you could show me some of that footage, though, stand by for footage. Yeah, I feel like stand by. I feel like you might be sorry, not talking to me. Uh, no, I what am. What do you mean sorry? <laughs> so you weren't listening? You're talking to someone else? Hold on a second. What? You're clearly talking to someone. I'm talking else. to you. I said, hold on a second. Go. Stand by. Stop <laughs> saying stand by. You've never <laughs> in 300 episodes of this part of life. You've never said stand by. Sorry, I'm just... Your, your hand is hovering, <laughs> I'm just, hovering over a button. It's There's clearly a button in your sunglasses. There's just like, there's just a lot going on right now. Stand by. It's, it's like... There it, isn't a lot going on. We're sitting in a room, it's just the two of us, right? Yeah, but sometimes, you know, when it feels like there's like voices in your head telling you to execute the mission, to execute the mission, or there will be consequences. Relate. I actually can't relate to that. You ever just have these voices in your head telling you they have your kids... They have your kids execute the mission. Yeah, you came back from the States wearing a suit, by the way. I'd never seen you in a suit before. Stand by. Stand by. Target's about to show the footage. Can, I, right. see, can I see the... You said there was a file? Yeah, uh, I think you are at best not well and at worst a rat. Sure, that's fine. 
That's that's, that's safe. Fun. <laughs> I give up. I can't <laughs> lie. Getting back to the AARO, um, the head of this organization, Sean Kirkpatrick. Sounds like you might know him, Rory. Colonel Sean. <laughs> that's right. From the AARO. <laughs> How I've, many I've, Sean's I've, could there be at the I've AARO? I've read about him. I've read about the, him. How many I, Sean's? I've never met him personally, obviously, because I don't even know about the organization. The, what did you say? The AARO? You know it well. You've said it like five times. <laughs> these guys are even describing these events in detail. I mean, if you think back in the day, they would bend over backwards, kill witnesses, do anything they could. Well, I made up that last bit, but they would do anything they could to claim that something was a weather balloon. Uh, Sean is coming out and saying, what our military pilots are seeing are one to four meters wide, silver, translucent, and metallic. These things travel at high velocity, 10,000 to 30,000 feet in the air. Jeez. So they're, they are uh, not only seeing patterns, but they're uh, telling us, letting us know about them. Uh, so apparently, even what we saw there um, is a common theme. But are they, are they all shaped like orbs? No, I don't think so. Uh, I think they might be of a variety of different shapes, but as he says, one to four meters wide, mostly silver metallic. Oh, okay. I mean, one to four meters wide for something that's flying is small. Sure. This is drone kind of territory and size. Yeah, there's not a little uh, one foot gray piloting that craft. I assume it's okay, never mind. Could be. <laughs> not ruling anything out at this stage. A Pentagon report released in 2021 said that of the 144 reports made since 2004, only one could be explained. Whoa. Basically, they have no idea what's going on. And they're very clear that they haven't ruled out extraterrestrials. Rory, it is time to look at another piece of evidence to take our next step into this truly mind-blowing and groundbreaking case. And you know what? Turn that f***ing camera on. Because I've got a message okay. uh, No one said it was Sean. a camera. No one said Sean? it was a camera. John, turn the camera on. Stand by. Yeah, he want, uh, Target wants yeah, to Sean, talk to you. Yeah, Sean, listen up, motherfucker. He wants to talk to you, so just talk into the, the, ca the glasses. Just talk into the glasses. <laughs> so it is I'll, a camera? No, I didn't say there was a camera. I didn't say it could transmit anything. Just tell me and then I'll tell Sean. And then, yeah, just, yeah. Sean, I hope you're sitting down because Motherfucker! Sorry, I'm just not used to talking live to someone. It's a little bit of pressure. Yeah. Sean, fucking. All right, motherfucker. This is. You think that you're such a big guy and I'm such a small guy? Sorry, I'm just. Sean, we're getting off on the wrong foot here. I, uh. Just plan what you want to say before we say it. Ah, uh, I'm he... just. He's powerful. Sean, you're powerful. Yeah. I'm a little bit. I'm averting my eyes. Um, and it's no, not. But actually, f this. Because you know what, Sean? The. The. You're the little guys so many have had enough. Well, the little guys have had enough. Not all the little guys, because remember, he has my kids and my family. So let's maybe <laughs> let's be kind to Sean. Right. Well, I meant metaphorically, little guys, not not your little guys. I, and honestly, that's a problem for you, brother. It sounds like you signed away your fucking soul to the devil. Not like me. Not like this guy with uh, conviction who's about to read out a bunch of ads on the podcast. Uh, and Sean's got your wife. He just told me. <laughs> The Sean, earpiece. he's got your wife. So Sean, brother, <laughs> dude, <laughs> this isn't chill. Yeah, he's got your Bro. wife and he's got my kids. Don't say, don't say anything that's gonna piss him off. I think we can. Uh, I think uh, we got off of the wrong foot. Uh, and I would uh, please let her go. Please, for the love of God, let her go, Sean. Uh, all right, this isn't working. For all right, motherfucker, listen up. I'm coming to kick your ass. I'm going to get those little spectacles. I'm going to break them in two, and I'm going to read the little the fucking little type on the on the chips or something. I'm going to figure out where you live, motherfucker. So you better sleep with one one eye open. So uh, All right, I just heard a gunshot through my sunglasses. Well, hopefully that's your kids and not my wife. <laughs> uh, we, we don't know what that means yet. Um... This is a video released by the Pentagon back in 2021, only two years ago, of footage captured by the Air Force. And this is one of the first videos that really blew up on the internet. Okay. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. That's not our LNS though, is it? It's not. It is our LNS, dude. Well, if there's like a thing. It's rotating. Check out 
Rory, have you seen that video before? Not only have I seen it, but we've both seen it before. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the UFO known as the Tic Tac UFO. Mmm. A uh, famous one we've talked about on a lot of different cases, including fan favorite and Rory favorite, Shag Harbor, where uh, a UFO allegedly at some point became a U-S-O. Right. Uh, an unidentified submerged object uh, because th this tic tac, this strange craft that was seen in the skies, also went down and interacted with the ocean below it. Uh, this is famously one of the most convincing pieces of UFO evidence in the entire world. This trumps Roswell, this trumps the Phoenix Lights. Uh, it's, in, it's insane. If you haven't seen this video yet, you should definitely check it out because uh, read about it. Read the articles. It is, it is genuinely unexplainable. As I say, the links to all the evidence, uh, this week are in the description of this podcast. We don't, uh, normally do that because we're too lazy, but this week it's utterly essential. So you can go check out that video. If you swipe up on your podcast player, it should be there under the description. Did you get that, Sean? Yep. All the links in the description. All the evidence. Got it. Check. Sean, I'm going to f*** you up. Sean, don't talk to him like that. I'm going to... Ryan House kick you in the nuts. How do you like that, Sean? A second gunshot. We both know that's a sound effect that you play to freak me out, and it ain't freaking me out, Sean. Because I've had two beers, Sean. So I'm actually pretty buzzed, and not a lot is phasing me. Even the prospect of the CIA murdering my loved ones. It should phase you. Beers or no beers. But for the people seeing this for the first time, I mean, what are the elements that make this so mind-blowing? I mean, for one, as you say, it is the Tic Tac shape, but it is sort of, um, roughly speaking, a somewhat... It's like a variation on a classic UFO shape, I would say. Yeah, kind of. But it flies arguably sideways, and then the bit that always blows my mind is the way it kind of stops and rotates. Yeah, it just rotates in midair. It, it defies the physics of the Earth, this thing. It's, it's annoyingly weird. Uh, it's one of those videos where I wish I had never seen it. <laughs> it's the dog in Yeezys Because it's, it's fun to talk about as a paranormal investigator, but it's really annoying at the same time because, I mean, Jesus Christ, look at that thing. It's insane the way it's moving. Okay, so with this newly formed AARO investigating all these sightings, in 2022, last year, they held a congressional hearing about their progress. Super researcher Amy combed through this 90 minute hearing and has filled us in on exactly what went down. Various congressmen and women grilled the military representatives on what they knew, what was the threat posed to the United States of America, and of course, were these things from Russia or China? UAPs exhibit unusual flight characteristics, appear to demonstrate advanced technology, and some of them appear to remain stationary in winds, move against the wind, maneuver abruptly, or move at considerable speed without discernible means of propulsion. Are we aware of any foreign adversary capable of moving objects without any discernible means of propulsion? We're not aware of any adversary that can move an object without discernible means of propulsion. There are a number of events in which we do not have an explanation, and there are a small handful in which there are flight characteristics or signature management that we can't explain with the data that we have. I hate how all of this has to be worded in Congress. Let's g throw out the big words and the fancy talk. Just say, this shit is wild. Do we have anything that can do this? Like, no. Does anyone? We don't know. Court dismissed. Clang, clang. Let's all get, go get a cheeseburger. That's how simple it should be. The congressman should be able to go, um, Colonel, is Gwen Stefani here because this shit is bananas? B-A-N-A-N-A-S. <laughs> it should be that casual. It should be, this is, this is over baking it, really. And are other nations reporting these? 
Allies have seen these. Uh, China has established its own version of a UAP task force. So clearly, a number of countries have observations of things in the airspace which they can identify. We share data with some nations and some share data with us. I mean, Rory, I don't uh, disagree with your assessment, uh, but if we can just read between a couple of the lines there. Sure. It is astonishing that like when you zoom out for a second, this is happening in the highest offices of governance in the most powerful country on earth. They're basically standing around with their fucking dicks in their hands going, do you know what it is? No one does. Have we ever seen anything in our own development or in any other country's development that even suggests this is possible? The answer is no. Well, there you go. You kind of have your answer. That if we don't know what it is and no one on earth knows what it is, it ain't from earth. At some points, the military men did get quite cagey. In one example, when Congressman Michael Gallagher asked about a specific incident where a UFO was seen over a nuclear base. One such incident allegedly occurred at Malmstrom Air Force Base, in which 10 of our nuclear ICBMs were rendered inoperable. At the same time, a glowing red orb was observed overhead. I'm not commenting on the accuracy of this. I'm simply asking you whether you're aware of it and whether you have any comment on the accuracy of that report. I have heard stories. I have not seen the official data on that. So you've just seen informal stories, no official assessment that you've done or exists within DOD that you're aware of uh, regarding the Malmstrom incident. Uh, all I can speak to is, you know, what's within my cognizance of the UAP task force, and we have not looked at that incident. Well, I would say, I mean, it's a pretty high-profile incident. This dude is so frustrated that no one has any information on this orb. He's like, but we can all agree it happened, right? And, you, and your, your department is supposed to keep tabs on this shit? And I saw an orb. People saw an orb. I just love that so much. It's like, have you any comment on the uh, glowing orb that hovered over a nuclear facility and rendered our international missiles inoperable? <laughs> it's like, well, I've heard stories. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> could you be any more? Could you be any more obtuse? It's like he has to admit that, of course, he's heard of the Maelstrom incident, right? But uh, he's just not talking about it today. <laughs> but there were other cool findings uh, that came out of that thing. Um, they said that so far, the military have not collided with any UAPs, but there have been 11 near misses. Wow. They didn't divulge any further details. At the end of the meeting, the media and the members of the general public were asked to leave. The officials stayed behind for a closed session where their answers would be kept under wraps by the government. We obviously don't know what was said and we may never find out, but what we do know is during the videoed public session, sometimes the servicemen would refuse to answer a question, but promise they would come back to it during the <laughs> private session. Uh, so It was mostly the orb shit. <laughs> it was almost entirely any time the orb was brought up. It was like, maybe we can, wink, get to that later, wink, wink. Yeah, it's like, uh, how often are you seeing, you know, while they're asking questions, how often are you seeing UAPs? We're seeing them on AM on a weekly basis at this stage, um, we have multiple data sets that we are investigating. Okay, who is Zonktar? <laughs> we will discuss that during the closed session. Uh, <laughs> Researcher Amy has listed all the times during the hearing that they said they would, quote, come back to it later. Right. Which was, one, what are other countries' militaries reporting? Okay. Two, do UAPs emit radio frequencies? Sure. Three, have the encounters with UAPs altered the development of offensive or defensive capabilities? All right. And four, have they detected any submerged underwater UAPs? Glad those are coming back. All right. This is why they don't let people like myself and Kit into these government meetings. Because my questions would be, one, have we seen one of these motherfuckers? Two, do we have one of these motherfuckers? <laughs> And three, can I see one of these motherfuckers? I mean, uh, those are all questions for the late night session, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I'm not getting a lot of answers to those. Yeah, we're gonna get, uh, you know, a bottle of 1942, a couple backwoods, and we're gonna have a little late night session and talk about the shit that's uh, too hot for TV. Man, those questions will really get you chubbed up, get you excited about this story. The fact that they 
behind closed doors, off the record, are going to discuss <laughs> whether they are developing new military technologies based on UFOs, uh, whether the UFOs have communicated using f- radio frequencies in any way, yeah. and whether they found any underwater. Jesus Christ, man. That's what do you crazy. think was said back there? I know we need a little. Uh, we need some hero whistleblower. We with- need a Rory with <laughs> with with fake Ray Bans with cameras in them inside that hearing. <laughs> Unfortunately, the guy leading that kind of meeting would be Colonel Sean, the guy who paid me to be here today. <laughs> so he did. So he did. You were paid Hypoth- to in be- this hypothetical hypothetical situation. Yeah. Towards the end of this big meeting, Ronald Moultrie was asked the following question. We're going to have a classified briefing. Now, without going into the details of what kind of secrets that we can't share here, what are we protecting? I don't know if you can answer this question in an open forum, but what, in your perception, do we have to, quote, protect? And Ronald replied, I think right now what's really important for us is to protect how we know certain things. What? You asked the question yourself, Rory. Do we have one of these motherfuckers? How do they know that he, he just said, we need to protect how we know this? Oh, I see. I see. So you're telling me that in Area 51 in the desert somewhere, there isn't one of these UAPs shot down? Me? Am I telling you that? It's a rhetorical question. Okay, good. For the audience. Shot down, Rory. Like the quote unquote Chinese spy balloons. Okay, now we're getting into some weird territory. Do you remember this story of the spy balloons? This was a weird start to the year. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, a few months. It was February. Yeah. yeah. I think I was literally tweeting about it at the time from the uh, This Paranormal Life Twitter account. Words to the effect of like retweeting headlines being like, let's f***ing go. Yeah, I had to delete a lot of Kit's tweet. He kind of went on a fake news rampage one evening and I had to kind of do damage control to... <laughs> No fake news. These were government reports and (laughs) headlines from reputable organizations such as (laughs) crystallinks.org. But it was an exciting time for the UFO community because uh, there were headlines everywhere saying unidentified flying objects flying over the US. The government is panicking and it was headline news. There was a lot of pressure on Biden to talk about it And he eventually ordered for them to be shot down. Um, Yeah, we're not saying alien. We're saying UFO, unidentified flying objects. UAP, UFO, whatever you want to call it. And like I say, on the 4th of February, 2023, an American F-22 brought down the Chinese spy balloon that had been floating over the continental United States for a few days. Now, that story was global headlines. But all the details that followed uh, weren't as popular or as known Um, because they kind of kept coming. And less than a week later on February 10th, more were shot down over Alaska. In some cases, the wreckage was recovered from uh, these objects, but in others, they weren't. In at least one case, one of these objects was shot down over Alaska, and they basically said, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack where it exactly landed. Alaska's like a whole giant continent sized country basically pretty big pretty cold um and we can't find it and we're not going to spend the time and the money trying to do it it would be impossible what a bad messy operation interesting stuff if you have the technology and the capabilities to attack something at presumably hundreds of miles per hour and blow it out of the sky don't tell me you can't find it when it hits the ground that's someone who says i don't want to clean it up that's what that is (laughs) Well, this is the question, Rory. What are they hiding? Isn't this Roswell all over again? Something lands, something gets taken away or doesn't get taken away, (laughs) and it gets bundled into the back of a secret facility somewhere? This is like me as a child telling my mother, Mother, I have the methods and the capabilities of eating this mashed potatoes and sausages, but I am not physically capable of locating the mess and cleaning it up after the operation. (laughs) I will be... In my bedroom, uh, doing a tactical uh, session of watching Peppa Pig and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That is all for today's briefing. Thank you, Mother. Thank you, Congressman Father. I will see you all later for the late night session of Cookies and Milk. (laughs) Meeting adjourned. But Rory, I'm not going to sign off on today's special report without 
just one more piece of recent UFO evidence. And I am not sure whether you've actually seen this one. Hmm. Because uh, as we know, it is fascinating that the military are the ones kind of leading this charge of disclosing enormous amounts of UAP information, but they're not the only ones having these sightings. And this year also featured another fascinating UAP sighting. This one from a private citizen, a man piloting a small plane uh, over Medellin in Colombia. This came from Jorge Ortega and his co-pilot. Whoa, I mean, you could tell this is from a, uh, a private citizen because this is not from a drone. This is not from an onboard camera. This is from an iPhone. What was that? Jesus, something just whizzed past the plane. Yeah, uh, feel free to get a closer look at this. I will. He's flying in the plane, and then in the in the span of about a second, something whizzes by in the opposite direction at very high speeds. I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to rewind it and take it frame by frame because, as some of you may know, uh, I have a little bit of background experience with Adobe After Effects, with special effects, visual effects. I'm trying to see if I can. Sorry, well, sorry. What are you insinuating? I'm Rory? just trying to make sure that this thing is legit. I'm trying to see if I can find any flaws in it. If the lighting is wrong, if the frame rates don't match. Mm, so Rory's doing some CSI forensic video research here. Some analysis of the clip. I mean, this thing is really weird. I mean, it, it is pretty much the Tic Tac though, isn't it? Yeah, it would be a very hard one to fake, let me tell you, because not only is the object moving in the opposite direction of the plane, the plane is moving. So even trying to capture the motion. Right. It's not accurately. a static camera we're dealing with here. Yeah, and the camera's moving. So this is, yeah, that will be a very hard one to, to fake for sure. You might actually enjoy Rory. I was delighted when I was uh, researching this one online that actually a very clever Reddit user uh, on the R UFO subreddit actually did a deep dive analysis of this video. Love it. Let's check it out. And remember that the uh, links to these videos are in the description of this podcast. They're pointing out that it exhibits what we've seen in other sightings, a kind of erratic movement. And that, crucially, it's actually visible from much earlier in the video than you even think. Yeah, it's there. And it stops moving uh, in the air at some point, changes direction, reappears. And I forgot this bit, that there's actually a second object, whatever that means. Stuff that you really never would have noticed in a million years yeah. from watching it. It gets really close to the plane. You can see that it looks like a fucking stingray whizzing past at 200 miles per hour. You can basically see this thing in high definition. You'll understand why uh, that made headlines when that arrived only a few weeks ago. Wow. I saw one headline. It was like, best UFO footage ever captured. Uh, because, yeah, yeah. Well, goddamn. I mean, we, it hasn't come from as reliable a source as the military. But unlike the military one, which is seen through kind of like a, you know, grainy plane camera, this one was shot on a on a goddamn iPhone 11. Yeah. Um, so we're getting a better look at it. It's harder to kind of conceal this type of evidence of extraterrestrial life when it was shot on a dude's iPhone and uploaded immediately to TikTok. I think it was on TikTok at some point. Yeah. There's not much the government can do to silence that voice. Uh, whereas, you know, if it's something that ca came from the U.S. military, they can say, you're not allowed to release that. That's classified. We're burying that forever. Whereas if it's just some dude in his plane being like, yo, what the f*** is this? I'm going to put that on Facebook. How are you taking that down? You can't really. Rory, I have taken you with this emergency special broadcast to the listeners at home. I've taken you on a bit of a journey across what I think are the three or four most convincing, most uh, unexplained UAP sightings of the last couple of years. With that in mind, with the headlines in mind, with the kind of general direction that things are going, what do you think's going on? I don't know, man. It seems like the fact that the public have access to cameras so readily, uh, and now even public citizens have access to planes more readily. The government are maybe changing their policies on how to deal with UFOs. Uh, because they can't hide this shit in the shadows the way they used to, uh, allegedly in the past. That's kind of what we're seeing today. 
Uh, of course, at the end of every episode, we have to come down on a yes or no as to whether our case is truly paranormal. You know, I've had a bit of fun framing this case as, you know, are UFOs invading Earth right now? I'm not saying that there's a, a War of the World style kind of takeover coming imminently. But if we have to pin these down, I guess the question is, do we think that these sightings, they're clearly connected because they're also similar. Uh, sure. Are they really paranormal? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, what do you, what do you want from me? There's not really room for negotiation and discussion. <laughs> Sorry, Sean, brother. We're gonna have to keep our families. You just showed me a video of a yes. fucking disco ball was whipping by a plane at a thousand miles an hour, stopping in midair, and then going <laughs> up into space. Yeah. Because guess what, motherfucker? <laughs> if America doesn't know what it is, no one does. <laughs> We've all seen the graphs. They spend 25 times more on their military than all the other countries in the world combined. It's not an Irish drone. <laughs> it's not a Welsh drone. It's not a French drone. What is it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, the, it, this is a weird case. I feel <laughs> like usually on an episode of This Paranormal Life, anytime we get evidence, video evidence, that's the, that's a piece of candy we get to enjoy mm. with our shit sandwich. This episode was nothing but candy from the start. It was a candy dinner. It's Halloween and I'm sick. My belly hurts because I've eaten a whole bucket of candy. Yeah, I, I've overdosed now on paranormal evidence. And much like eating too much candy, I think it's going to kill me. <laughs> I think there's a bounty on my head. There's a red dot sight on my neck. I'm not long for this world anymore. You ever eat so many Snickers bars the CIA kill your dog? Because that's where <laughs> I'm at. That's where I'm at personally. Uh, I don't know what to say about this case. This is a uh, this is a weird one for sure. And that's why what can we say? And that's what? why I had to bring it as a special bulletin. It doesn't quite fit the box of a regular paranormal investigation that we can file away, like the end of Indiana Jones. What are we even concluding today? What's the question? I just said, uh, are these are these recent sightings paranormal? Yeah, yeah, it's a double yes. There um, you go. <laughs> get your pitchforks. Uh, get your weapons. Um, this is so Stay not safe. gratifying. Usually we have to fight tooth and right. nail to <laughs> claw too easy. out a double yes. I could have given you a double yes after that first orb. <laughs> it's done. It's too goddamn easy. Um, <laughs> hey, I think, uh, as I say, this was a little bit of a different one and one that we're probably, you know, as I say, to keep the format of the show uh, right, we got to give it a yes at the end of the episode, but we all know it's a bit of a different one. We're going to be keeping an eye on this one. It's going to be a developing story. You know, we'll let you know if we're talking about it on the main episodes or the after parties or the bonus episodes. And, you know, if you're interested in this story, tune in um, for that. We'd love to know what you think as well about those videos, given that they're in the description. Go watch them if you're curious. Or don't. As I said, many of them right, uh, ruin the way life, yeah. that you look at the universe and your understanding of uh, humans and their relationship with this world. Yeah. So hug your cat, pray to whatever gods you think... Um, can save you. I've already said this on the podcast before. Uh, unfortunately, Kit and I have been neuralized so many times that our brainwaves are so weak, there's really no way it can even be erased any further. It's somewhat along the mental capacity of a beetle. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't even forget that we've seen these videos. Because if you neuralize me, it does nothing anymore. I'm already as dumb as a human being can be. I've already forgotten so much stuff. We're like those snake charmers that are immune to poison. <laughs> We've seen those guys. They just get bitten and it's like nothing. It's like drinking a Diet Coke to them. It's like right. a little pep in their step. The, and people are watching me like, oh my God, what's the mystery? How does he deal with the poison? It's like, it's because he was so yeah. bad at this, he got bitten my a thousand heart times. every time for that's, the first eight times. Yeah, That's us. That's us. Um, I hope you have enjoyed this investigation into all the recent UAP sightings. Uh, you know, thank you to everyone who's, you know, tagged us in these videos, sent them over the last couple of years. Anytime you see cool shit, you know, you know where to send it. Tag us on social media. Then Not even paranormal stuff. Dogs riding skateboards. Sure. Uh, people doing stunts on dirt bikes. You know where to send that cool shit. Links in the description uh, of this podcast to all our socials. You could also send it to this paranormal life podcast at gmail.com. If you are piloting a Cessna or some kind of propeller plane and you've seen 
a Tic Tac UFO, of course, you need to let us know. If even this episode hasn't scratched the UFO itch for you and you're still hungry for more, head on over to patreongoddamn.com because over there, patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life, we've got many, many, many bonus episodes, many, many, many after parties discussing the paranormal and the making of this show. Patreon.com forward slash this paranormal life. Uh, and you're going to want to go over there and check out some of those episodes because, of course, Kit and I are now going into hiding. Yeah. Uh, it was a huge Witness mistake protection. to cover this podcast. Huge mistake to cover such recent uh, paranormal events. Usually we hide in the shadows of the past. And now that we're in the present, we got to go before we become the past. This evidence was so convincing, I turned Rory from an inside agent to, I guess, an outside agent. He flipped. I've been flip-flopping all around the place. I'm an investigator. I work for the CIA. If there's one takeaway from this episode, it's that I have commitment issues. <laughs> and at the end of every episode, we like to uh, shout out those who've supported us on Patreon. Let's do it right now. First big shout out goes to Colonel Sean, of course, who really financially supported me uh, in the last couple weeks. And uh, he's been a big fan of the show, listens Every week, trust me, brother, he's listening. Uh, not when they come out, but when they're live in the room. Uh, he has a robotic spider with a mic in it somewhere in this room, and he listens to every goddamn word we say. Yeah, we're popular in the various governmental departments of the United States of America. So thank you, Colonel Sean. Thank you. Thank you so much to Jade Fawn. Jade Fawn wakes up at the crack of dawn. She's kind of the paranormal commune's official rooster. The kind of cause in the morning to wake up the troops. Not troops, citizens. The citizens. Uh, citizens that are training to become troops. For to the become troops war, yeah. for the war, yeah, of course. But instead of like a chicken's cock a doodle doo, they just go, ah! Like a screech, like a horrible banshee. Mm -hmm. And it gets people up, it works. Whatever gets the job done, Jade. Thanks also to Modella. You know, I was recently ordering some groceries here to the commune, and uh, and I thought at the last minute, I'll just I'll just chuck in a couple of Modellas, and then this guy showed up. Were you thinking of Modelo? Oh, f is that what it is? Yeah, you didn't even order beer. You ordered a uh, a, a guy? guy called Modella. Well, you, you I wanted a like a, a refreshing Mexican lager, right? And I got a dude. <laughs> is that fair? It seems. I wish I still had the receipt. Uh, it's a like, drinking yeah, he's buddy. He's a nice guy, but like. I'm thirsty, so... Maybe you can hang out with them. I thank you lastly today to Dan Lamber 13. Dan Lamber is encased in amber, a bit like a prehistoric bug. He was climbing a tree one day and then, uh, oops, branch cracked. He slipped, fell, and then all the ooze of the, the goo from the inside of the tree is insane. It, 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 like, is it covered a... him and then he became encased in amber. Uh, such so, a crazy way to you die. Know, bad... Bad to happen, for sure. Yeah. For Dan. But um, pretty cool that he'll be fossilized for future generations. For that maybe millions cool. of years. Maybe one day we can build a theme park based off of his DNA. <laughs> Who knows? Dan Lassic Dan Park. World. <laughs> yeah, we could workshop the title. Yeah. So thank you to everyone we've shouted out today on the podcast. Thank you for tuning into this episode. As we say, you know where we are over on Patreon to grab that bonus content. But until then... We'll be back on Tuesday with a brand new paranormal tale. Bye-bye. Love you.